Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today, with kind of the rise of really the metadata landscape and data lineage becoming more and more prevalent in production and no longer just kind of being a science experiment and how you're tracking t changes to your data over time, I wanted to make a video just kind of quickly comparing, contrasting some of the top data cataloging tools for cataloging and maintaining your data lineage. Um, so you have an idea of, hey, what does the landscape look like? What are some of the options out there available to me as you begin to implement data lineage in your own use case? Um, so the main ones I'm gonna focus on here are Calibra um, and then Monte Carlo and Alation. Um, those are kind of the three ones I see used most commonly, but if there's other tools out there that you think are more relevant, that you think are much better for or managing your lineage, let me know. Um, the reason I'm not focusing on Open Lineage and Marquez themselves are just because those are kind of part and parcel for any lineage solution. They're both, most of them are built on top of those frameworks, Open Lineage being the data collection engine that's actually maintaining and understanding, hey, what's happening in the data set? And then Marquez is what's used to visualize that data in kind of a graph format. Um, and then that's what Calibra and Alation um, and Monte Carlo used to actually generate the lineage graphs that I'll show you within their interfaces. So we're gonna go through each of those three tools, pros, cons, best use cases. So you have an idea, what's the best tool for you? So without further ado, let's get into it with Calibra. So up here on the screen, I have a visual of a typical Calibra instance uh, environment where showing the lineage as data goes through different transformations, is filtered, has some computation applied to it, gets aggregated into a larger data set, copied over into another data warehouse before being served to some kind of representative. Um, and this is really the core of Calibra, is tracking the movement of data through the various systems um, that before it ends up in whatever end destination it could be. So this could be you know, a visualization tool, it could be an actual you know, serving something back to the customer. Um, but really the key thing that Calibra focuses on, what all data lineage products will focus on here, is tracking and seeing how data is moving through the various pipelines and various data sets that comprise the movement of data within your organization because each transformation results in a new data set technically. Um, and so Calibra, now you kind of have the primer like how lineage works. Um, Calibra, what it offers is a way to manage this at really enterprise scale. Um, it's a data governance platform. So not only do you have, you know, this kind of operational advanced data lineage features, it also has the ability to, you know, track data flow across all your different systems, not just databases or cloud storage, but things like the TL pipelines. Um, and then also provides a lot of automation on top of it. So automated data discovery, um, automatic mapping of fields. So you don't have to set up these relationships manually. You just plug Libra into your source systems and it'll determine how the lineage of data flows between them. And so that gives, you as a business really deep insight into data usage, quality, and then also really helpful for regulatory, regulatory compliance. Um, and comes with a lot of automation to make it easier to do that if you're not super technically capable with data lineage to get started with. Um, and then also supports both technical and business lineage. So not only the movement of data at a technical level, but also its transformation within business processes. Um, so, you know, if you have, so you can see here actually where data is being used in the stress test scenario or in credit risk versus just the technical, hey, it was computed or filtered here. Um, and so this enables, you know, a lot of organizations to really scale and keep track of all their data assets pretty efficiently um, and have a unified view for both a business user and then also the more technical users that are actually generating the data. Um, so both of them have a common understanding of how the data is being processed. Pros of Calibra are number one is comprehensive governance features, end-to-end -end governance capabilities, data cataloging, stewardship, compliance management. Um, it's got enterprise support and scalability. It's designed for large enterprises. Uh, it's really designed around features at scale across complex data environments, um, so multi-cloud architectures. It's got enterprise support, scalability, designed <coughs> for really having features that scale across many complex data environments have the ability to share data across many different environments um, and just act as you know what it calls a data intelligence platform um, and it's also very business friendly like you can kind of see in the ui it's designed to be relatively easy to use for someone that might not have a super data focused background um, and also design around compliance and kind of you know business processes what are you going to actually use this data for rather than being like a data engineering tool and focusing on that <coughs> So that's you know, something to keep in mind. It is a business 
being business friendly as a data language platform is not a downside at all. Like that is most commonly who should be understanding the data lineage and what's going into their data. So not a downside, but something to keep in mind. Um, and then on the cons of Calibra, it's got a pretty high cost as a commercial platform. Um, it is going to be expensive, especially if you're a large organization or for small organizations that don't have enough scale to really make super big use of it. Um, or if you have a limited governance bot budget, Calibra probably isn't going to be a good tool for you just because it's really expensive um, and is really designed for really large scale implementations. Um, and then also compounding that is it's got complex implementation um, process. You know, it's you have to integrate all your data sources in here. If you want it to act as your data platform, you're going to need to have everything plugged in. And so that's going to require a pretty good amount of integration work. Um, and then also, there's a lot in it. <laughs> so learning how to make use of everything is pretty difficult. Um, you know, just if you're starting from this, starting from cold start, or even if you're familiar with other tools, one of the advantages and downsides of a GUI approach is like you don't need technical knowledge, but you need to spend time with the tool to really understand how to use it. Um, so what Calibra is best suited for in terms of best use cases are large enterprises with complex data environments. So ideal for enterprises that are managing large volumes of data across multiple systems, need a comprehensive governance platform for multiple teams, um, and then also regulatory compliance. <clears throat> Organizations that are in highly regulated industries, finance, healthcare, Calibra has a lot of built-in compliance and policy management features that make it really well suited to those use cases. Um, and then kind of in tune with that multi-team approach, it's really suitable for organizations that need to have good alignment between their business and you know, IT data teams um, and have that clear governance framework that is using a common language for both teams and allows them both to understand what's going on and how they're contributing or consuming that data. Um, so that's Calibra in a nutshell. So next up on the block is Monte Carlo. Um, and Monte Carlo is a data platform, observability platform that's designed around ensuring the health and reliability of data pipelines using automated data lineage capabilities as to monitor and detect incidences within those data pipelines. So kind of a unique approach to actually using data lineage as a pipeline monitoring tool. Um, and its data lineage features are thus built around helping data teams identify the root causes of data issues, track how data is flowing through systems, and also a macro lens, not only in the pipeline, but hey, has the freshness for an overall data set? How's the quality? What's the volume like? Um, and also understand dependencies between different sources and pipelines and how data is flowing through all the different systems in the modern data stack. And unlike traditional data lineage tools, Monte Carlo's lineage is more tightly integrated with data reliability and quality monitoring. You can kind of see that example here in this data reliability dashboard it has. Um, and it automatically will map data dependencies across data cloud warehouses, ETL tools, BI platforms, and allow data engineers to identify anomalies and then also ensure the correctness of their data. Um, and Monte Carlo really excels at providing real-time lineage updates, um, which are particularly fast in fast moving organizations, obviously, because you don't need to set up um, any kind of you know extra tooling to alert you on lineage updates or changes. Monte Carlo is built around saying, hey, you're gonna have constantly have a live view of exactly how your lineage looks, um, alerting that you can then layer on top on top of that without needing to, you know, do any kind of refreshing or you know waiting for your daily update. Right? It's all focused on real time, really fast moving pipelines for really fast moving teams and use cases. Um, and so kind of how it works here, and you can see an example of like the Monte Carlo architecture is what Monte Carlo will do, and here's an example of kind of what an alert will look like, is provide real time updates on data lineage and any changes in your data lineage. So anomalies that it detects, um, making it ideal for modern data pipelines that require immediate attention to data health and anomalies. Um, so that's one of its big pros. Um, and then it also has a cloud and data quality, or sorry, it has a data quality and observability focus, obviously here, where you can see, you know, tracking data anomalies over time, avoiding data downtime, and really is emphasizing using data lineage in a functional way to ensure your data is arriving reliably, and then offering that monitoring and learning that enables teams to prevent or really quickly resolve data issues, and then also tracking that to make sure that you are resolving those data issues over time um, in a really quick and optimized manner and identifying areas that you can improve if you're not able to identify them quickly. Um, and then finally, and you know, this is really highlighted with the architecture here is that it's 
optimized for cloud data warehouses, um, integrates really well with most of the big tools in the modern data stack. So platforms like Snowflake, Redshift, Airflow, uh, DBT, Databricks, uh, every type of SQL database, GitHub obviously. Um, so really useful tool. And uh, on the con side of things though, because it's really strong in data observability and lineage, it doesn't quite offer the same range of governance and compliance features that tools like Calibra provide. This is more about using data lineage in a functional way to improve your data pipeline and data deliverability. So it doesn't have quite the massive array of governance and compliance features that other tools might have um, for actually you know, making sure that you're taking this data results or the quality of your data sets and reporting it to somebody. Um, and there's also less of a focus on collaboration. It's really more geared strictly towards data engineers, operations teams, and not really towards the business side at all. So not very accessible for a business user or a broader team focused on data governance. So it's not, I wouldn't say appropriate to be your data governance tool for your whole organization. Um, and then it's also, there's a higher co cost for data quality monitoring. So, you know, it's premium features around observability and incidence detection, you're going to pay for some of that special sauce automation. So it's going to be more expensive than traditional data lineage tools, um, especially if data quality is your primary focus. Um, but for use cases that it's really well suited for are, you know, data reliability, data monitoring, ideal for organizations that require real time lineage to monitor the health and reliability of data pipelines. And also for any team that's going to need to, hey, I have an SLA on how quickly I need to resolve this data issue and prevent future incidents. Good way to track that and make and identify areas where you can improve to meet those SLAs or beat them over time. Um, and then also companies that operate heavily in cloud data warehouses like Snowflake, Redshift, BigQuery, going to benefit from those cloud native capabilities I described before, really easy to integrate um, and compatible with those. Um, and then finally, if you're looking for like a really focusing on using data lineage for incident management and root cause analysis, Monte Carlo's strict focus on observability makes it a great tool for you know your, those types of use cases and those teams where you just want to quickly identify the root cause of the data incidences and improve your pipeline stability over time. Um, and that is Monte Carlo in a nutshell. So now we will finish all the way up with Alation. Um, so let's go over there. So last but not least, we have Alation. Um, and Alation is a leading data cataloging tool these days that offers data lineage features. So it initially started as data cataloging and then started building in data lineage features. And because data cataloging and lineage are pretty closely linked, it makes sense to use it as a data lineage tool. Um, and it really focuses on making your data really easily discoverable and offering AI tooling uh, to make data understandable across an organization. So it's not just like, hey, I need to be a data engineer to understand what's happening within my data set, but I actually have ways to, as a business user, come in here, view the data I need to know, understand where it's coming from, and then use that information to help me understand that data so I can make better decisions with it. Um, and so Alation really heavily uses machine learning to kind of operate the, or automate the process of cataloging data and then building that lineage, um, and is known for its user-friendly interface, which allows users, you know, like I said, from any department, collaborate on that documentation and governance. Um, and data lineage is inferred from its query logs. Um, so you'll, essentially what Alation will do is understand, hey, what is the query that you're executing? Um, and then it will analyze that query log um, and use that to understand, hey, this is how the data is being queried, transformed, used across different platforms, uh, from databases to BI tools. And its focus on ease of use and collaboration, again, makes it a use for if you want to have kind of that self-service data mesh uh, like data culture where each team is responsible for tracking and uh, integrating its data with the rest of the organization. Um, and so one of its big uh, uh, pros, and you can see right here, is that automated lineage discovery where Alation will automatically capture data lineage by analyzing those query logs like I just described. And that really reduces a lot of manual effort in understanding and setting up lineage and then also making sure it stays up to date. Um, because otherwise, if you don't have that process automated in some way, it's just an incredible amount of man hours you're going to need to spend like constantly monitoring and keeping it up to date. And then it's also collaboration friendly. Um, so it's really designed around, hey, you are going to bring in your entire company here, you're going to connect all of your different tools that you're using, um, and you're going to use this as your single source of truth for under contributing to and you know pulling from your data catalogs. So you have 
comprehensive and also accurate documentation of all your data um, and no kind of duplicates or incongruencies across departments. Um, and then also, it's got a pretty user-friendly inter interface, um, very customizable. You can have different roles. You know, hey, if I'm a BI analyst, I can go in and look at just my BI tools. You can you know, have different teams segmented, really built for collaboration. And like I said, not really super technical. Um, so that can be a pro or a con, but it's very GUI focused. So it's meant to find, you know, hey, you can non-technical users can easily navigate and understand data lineage and making it set, that data lineage accessible to a broad audience is its big focus. Um, on the con side of things, limited gov advanced governance features. Um, so while it's really good for data discovery and you know kind of understanding where your data is, um, it does lack some of the more advanced kind of governance and compliance features. Um, it's not really focused on having really strict compliance that you can then output to a you know a governing body. Um, it's good for maintaining a view of the data and understanding you know hey, this is what you know having that single source truth that data catalog for the organization, but enforcing really strict rules on that is a really its strong suit because it really is kind of automatically reading in all the things you're doing um, and using that to put together your data lineage. Um, and if it's automatically doing that, it's kind of difficult to govern that automatically as well. Um, and then also like Calibra and you know honestly kind of like Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo is a bit cheaper but it's also a bit more limited. It's pretty costly um, for large, for small organizations. It's really meant for big multi-team enterprise organizations. It's just kind of overkill if you're a small organization. Um, and then also, there's less of a focus on real-time updates um, because in that process, you know, it's deriving that information about lineage from past queries using those query logs. It's not quite as real-time to a tool like Monte Carlo, which is reading those pipelines and understanding what the lineage real-time. Um, so that's also something to keep in mind as well. Um, but for best use cases, it's ideal for organizations that are really heavily reliant on SQL databases and just want to automatically capture all the lineage of their SQL transformations from query logs and just can plug in their SQL database, have Alation just kind of visualize all the different transformations um, and then have that in an accessible UI for non-technical users. And then also collaborative data governance. If you're a company that's looking to build a data catalog with strong collaboration features, great choice because it's giving power to you know both your business users and the data professionals to contribute to data documentation, which I think is really crucial um, in modern organizations. If you want to be data driven, you have to merge the data team. Um, and then also in tandem with that, any data discovery kind of self-service data mesh approach use cases, really well suited for those where you want to democratize data access and empower teams to really discover and integrate their data and use data without needing to constantly go to a technical member of the staff to uh, you know pull it. Um, and that is all I have for you today. So I hope you found this video helpful. If there's other tools you want me to cover in the data lineage or any other space, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but above all else, have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.